Okay, let's go ahead and get started. Hello everyone and welcome back to ECS 2210. Uh, this week uh, we are going to continue our discussions on diodes. Uh, we are going to see uh, several different circuits that are based on diodes, but they have applications in life that we are more familiar with than the diode circuits that we analyzed in the past week. Uh, in the past week, we learned about diodes and we learned how to actually learn different models of a diode, like for example, the exponential model, the constant voltage model, and so on. And then we started actually solving um, several examples of different kind of diode circuits with one or two or more diodes. Um, I'm hoping that most of you have done the assignments so that uh, you have got basically better and better in analyzing diode circuits. This week, we are going to uh, change gears a little bit. Uh, we are not going to analyze like normal diode circuits, like basically abstract diode circuits. We're going to only focus on the circuits that have certain applications in electrical engineering. And we're going to see those um, rather cool applications. Uh, after discuss and then that's the majority of our discussion this week after discussing that we're going to enter uh, chapter four of the textbook which is uh, basically on the bipolar junction transistors uh, we're going to in this week we're going to only introduce uh, the device level structure of the bjt transistors and uh, learn more about this three terminal device and how the current voltage relationship of different terminals are related to each other Okay, so let's say that the first application that we want to actually look into is when we want to create a voltage supply, a DC voltage supply of a basically arbitrary value. Let's say that I have an adapter, something like this, um, and this adapter that I have, it takes the AC signal and it generates a DC voltage for me. And later uh, in, the, in, in the next few slides, uh, in this lecture, you're going to actually learn how to make this adapter, right? So how to go from an AC uh, signal to a DC voltage using diode circuits. But for now, let's say that we do have that black box adapter, and it's giving me uh, somewhere around 3 volts, more or less, right? So the voltage across this adapter is 3 volts, okay? And it has a little bit of fluctuation, which I'm not really happy about because... Um, let's say I want to charge my cell phone, and my cell phone uh, on the on the cell phone it tells me that well I want a DC voltage of 2.4 volts, right? So that's the fixed voltage that I want to have. Yeah, maybe I'm okay with like I don't know 10 millivolts up and down from that 2.4, but not much more than that. Not like 100 millivolts or 200 millivolts or something like that, right? So what I want is that first of all uh, I don't have this battery that gives me 2.4 volts. I don't have an adapter. I've, go, I've gone to stores and I couldn't find something like that. And I want to use my electronic knowledge to actually create that. So what I do here is I'm going to use the fact that diodes, if you remember from the diodes current voltage relationship, we had the current of a diode equal to IS times exponential of the voltage across diode over this thermal voltage Bt, right, which was around 26 millivolts or so, right? And uh, we actually tried to write the uh, kind of like inverse or the opposite of this equation, writing basically voltage in terms of current. We saw that Vd is actually equal to Vt ln of Id over Is. Okay, and we said that, well, because there's this log relationship between them, this logarithmic function makes sure that if I have a lot of variations in my current, those variations are not going to be tr uh, translated to the voltage variations, at least linearly. They're going to be damped a lot uh, when, when we look at the voltage. So I'm going to use that property of a diode and say that if I have a diode like this, and I know that the current flowing through the diode is actually varying by a lot. I can actually be sure that as long as that current is not varying by like, I don't know, orders of magnitude, the voltage across the diode is pretty consistent, right? Um, and we actually did in the week one lecture, we actually did the calculation and we saw that if I'm 
increasing the, volt, uh, the current flowing through the diode by a factor of 10, the voltage across it only increased by only 60 millivolts or so. Okay, so if you don't remember this, go back, but go back and check that lecture. But well, we did the calculation and we found that. And as a matter of fact, the constant voltage model of a diode is actually based on this, right? Remember that we said that for a diode, when it turns on and it, when it has a current with the constant voltage model, we said that no matter what is the current, the voltage across the diode is VD on. Right? So this is really coming from the fact that the voltage across the diode doesn't change much with the, when, when the current changes. Okay, So it, when we have a property or like basically a voltage current relationship like this, it actually tells us it, it is indicating that the diode kind of works like a voltage source. So for example, if I wanted 2.4 volts um, across, the vo across my cell phone, right? at the two terminals of the, of the voltage that goes to the mice goes to my cell phone i can say that well i know that the voltage across the diode is somewhere between 700 to 800 millivolts depending on like well the is and some other stuff the doping and some other stuff that i i know about um i can put three of these diodes in series with each other and by a little bit of adjustment and we're going to do calculate those adjustments I can make sure that I do have always 2.4 millivolts, no matter what is the voltage here. This could be three volts, could be four volts, five volts. I can actually adjust this so that I get the three volts here. Let's see how do we do that. So that's actually the first part of this question. It says determine the reverse saturation current, that's IS, so that the V out that we get here is equal to 2.4 volts. Okay, so how do I do that? First, I need to actually figure out what's the current in this uh, circuit. So if I have three volts here, and I assume that I want 2.4 here for the V out, I know that the KVL tells me three minus the IR drop on this resistor, uh, which is 600 millivolts, is going to be 2.4. Great. Now, oh, actually, I didn't need to write the KVL. It, the question is actually, I know that the voltage across the resistor is 600 millivolts because here is 2.4 and adapter has three volts across it. And because the resistance is 100 ohms, I can actually calculate the current, right? So the current of the resistor, I R1, is 600 millivolts over 100 ohms. So it's 6 milliamps. Great, so now that I know the current, I'm gonna say that, well, the voltage across the diodes is basically three, so voltage across the diodes is three VD, right? So I can actually say, um, Basically, I can use that to calculate how much IS do I need, right? Or I can simply say that the current through the diode ID is equal to that IS exponential of VD over VT, right? And I know that ID is 6 milliamp. I know that IS is something that I want. I want to find out. I know that VD is, well, the voltage across each of these diodes, assuming that they're equal to each other, that they're identical, is going to be 800 millivolts. So that combined, I get 2.4. And VT is 26 millivolts at room temperature, right? So if I calculate IS from this, I'll find somewhere, some number like 2.6. Uh, times 10 to the negative 16 amperes. Okay, so we know that the reverse saturation current is actually pretty small. So this makes sense that it's like basically a fraction of a fm2 amperes uh, flowing through this uh, diode in the reverse um, direction. So now I know that what kind of an IS do I need. So once I know this IS, then I know that what kind of a diode do I want? So now if instead of three volts, I had like, I don't know, five volts or 10 volts or something like that, I still want a 2.5, uh, sorry, 2.4 volts across my cell phone. 
then the only thing that would have changed was this ID, the current through the resistor, right? Because the voltage across the resistor would have changed. So I just needed to change this ID here and I would have calculated a different IS, right? So I needed a different kind of a diode. But at the end of the day, uh, I could get uh, the 2.4 volts across my three diodes. Now, to check what happens if what happens to the V out, if the adapter voltage increases to 3.1 volts, meaning that if I increase the adapter voltage by, by, by 100 millivolts, what will happen to the V out, right? So I know that, so for part B, I know that V out is three times VD. So it's gonna be equal to, and I'm gonna write it based on this equation, three times VT ln of ID over IS. And I have everything here. I have ID, I found IS from the previous part and I have VT. So if I do the math, I'm gonna find 2.412 uh, volts. Okay, so what does this tell me? It tells me that when I change my adapter's voltage by 100 millivolts, the voltage across V out only changed by 12 millivolts, which is pretty good, right? We could do better than that, um, but uh, like we, we could actually adjust these diode properties so that we have less variations. But let's say that this is acceptable to us because we're just doing this example to show you that the voltage, uh, the diodes could be used as a voltage regulator to damp any kind of variations at the adapter. So perhaps we, if you want a better voltage regulation, meaning that a more steady DC voltage, uh, we have to somehow make sure that the, the voltage across the adapter doesn't change by hundreds of millivolts, right? And we're gonna learn that throughout this lecture, okay? When we learn about how to make these adapters, okay? Uh, now, you might wonder that, well, you did actually, you didn't actually consider something here. And that was uh, basically, well, the ID that I actually used here is 7 milliamp, right? And why did I do that? Well, I did that because, well, the voltage across the adapter went up by 100 millivolts. So let me actually raise these stuff. So I know that in for part B, here I have 3.1, and I'm assuming that the V out is still 2.4. So I have 700 millivolts across the R1 divided by 100 ohms, so ID is actually 7 milliamp, right? But you might say that, well, you, en you ended up having not 2.4 here. You ended up having 2.412, right? With this means that uh, basically, you couldn't say that the voltage across here is actually 700 millivolts. It, it was ex actually a little bit smaller than that. Uh, if I want to calculate it, so if I go ahead and calculate this, I find that the IR1 is actually V adapter minus the V out that I just calculated divided by R1, right? And since V adapter is 3.1 and V out is 2.412 and R is 100, I'll find something around 6.88 milliamps, okay? So approximately seven milliamps, but not exactly. Then the thing is that even if I take this number, this current, and plug it in back to the logarithmic equation to calculate the new V out. So let's call that, now let's call that V out iteration two, right? Then it would be what? Three times VT times ln of, now this time I'm gonna put it as 6.88 milliamp. And for the IS, I'm gonna use the same 2.6 times 10 to the negative 16 amps. Now, if I calculate this, I'm gonna get something around 2.411. So you can see that, yeah, maybe the variation was only 11 millivolts rather than 12 millivolts, but then their numbers are close enough for us to actually ignore this insignificant change. But in reality, what happens is that uh, if I have, if I wanted to actually calculate this very precisely, I had to do this, these iterations. So like I had to go with the assumption that initially I assumed that the current is seven milliamps 
and then calculate the voltage and then from the voltage I calculate the current and then from the current I calculate the voltage again and because the voltages are close enough I can stop right but if this these voltages were not close enough I had to actually uh, based on this voltage now calculate a new current that current would have been a little bit even less than 6.88 and then calculate the voltage again and again and again until this would be an iterative kind of a process until I actually get uh, to kind of like settle to a point that basically my voltage or my current doesn't change much okay this is a little bit of a, basically not not so nice kind of a process right we don't like to actually do these iterative analysis and that's why when it comes to small perturbations in the voltage uh, or current of a diode we actually uh, basically use a different kind of a method called small signal analysis of a diode which I'm going to explain in the next slide but before moving on just to review what we did here we had a circuit we had an adapter it had a dc voltage output but it was it had some fluctuations and it wasn't the more importantly it wasn't the level that i wanted so it was at three volts and i mentioned that it could have been 10 volts or 20 volts right and i wanted a, a, an exact voltage of 2.4 volts and i learned that i can actually make that using my dies i can use diodes to create um certain arbitrary voltage levels or dc voltage levels that are pretty much regulated meaning that they don't have a lot of variations okay uh, one question that might still remain in your mind is that well what if i wanted like i don't know 1.9 that's not really um, i cannot make it using two diodes or three diodes even with 0.7 or 0.8 or any kind of voltage between them so what if I what, what if the voltage that I wanted to actually create was not a multiple count of 0.7 or 0.8 or any voltage between them what do I do in that situation uh, be patient we're going to talk about that throughout this lecture we can we can actually make arbitrary level kind of uh, voltages uh, DC voltages for for our circuits okay